And the next guy we're talking running back at 33 is another back who's people might be thinking he's young because he was a rookie last year. He's not. He'll be 24 going next year. And that's Isaiah Pacheco, a player who was really a staple for JWB. We were we were very high telling everyone on draft this guy late third, early fourth. If you could get him trade into the fourth, you need to grab this guy. He's going to appreciate you'll be able to move for a second. Just the upside there in the Kansas City system. And that all came to fruition. That being said. We have him at running back 33 for a reason. He was a day three pick. They took him in round seven. We've talked at length about how replaceable those types of players. He looked fantastic when he's been getting out there. The little, little burst guy, exceptional speed. Uh, he had the best height adjusted speed score in last year's class, which is what mainly got us so excited, especially in that Kansas City system. If anyone's going to be able to figure out how to use a guy like this, it's going to be Andy Reid. And he really seemed to do so. He looked great, and he's made an impact in these playoff games. A big separator between a, Kansas, a team like Kansas City or a team like Buffalo is the ability to incorporate the run game into playoffs You know when maybe other parts of your game plan aren't going as perfect as you would like. And Pacheco's been huge for that team. Well, that sounds like a lot of good things, but he was still just the running back 34 in 2022, and that could potentially be the best season we see for him. Clyde edwards alaire the only other running back left on the books there in Kansas City, uh, will be back for next year. You could maybe argue he rolls and in, slides into that role McKinnon kind of played, and McKinnon and Pacheco took turns as far as fantasy relevance and the ceiling. Uh, Pacheco catches no passes. That's that's the biggest fall off here. He. I don't expect that to change. It's just not who he is as a player, and that makes him pretty capped. I think week to week, we had him in a weekly ring because he's the highest we'd ever put him. It's like running back 20, which is playable. It's a guy who can fill a need on your roster. When we're talking long term, between the draft capital, his age, his his innate uh, importance to this offense and not being the most important player there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not getting overly excited for Isaiah Pacheco. I've seen him sneaking around seven, eight, nine in startup drafts, super flex startup drafts. It's just too pricey for me. I, I've sold off almost all of my Pacheco from last season. I had him in every single league. I was getting a mid fourth one week. I even snook him in at the top of the fifth round of rookie drafts. Um, if you can move off, say, a Pacheco and pick up maybe a more polarizing wide receiver like a Rashad Bateman. That's a move I did straight up. I moved Pacheco for Bateman straight up towards the end of the season. I think that's a worthwhile investment. You're getting a player who could maybe fill a bigger need for your team. Um, other wide receivers who are in kind of that same range of dr- the draft, maybe a Calvin Ridley, Christian Kirk, um, those types of players, Brandon Ayuk. These are the kind of names you could probably sneak uh, straight up for Isaiah Pacheco, and I think they offer more upside to your team. Pacheco's fine. He's an RB2, but that's a, a spot on your dynasty team that's much more replaceable than wide receivers. You could potentially be wide receiver twos or threes, and this is a really good time to sell Isaiah Pacheco, especially if Kansas City goes to the Super Bowl, maybe he scores a touchdown. It's a great story for Pacheco, but with the limitations... There's just other players. There's other players in that range I'm going for. Thank you for Pacheco for what you did. We'll take our ROI, but you know, I don't, I'm not in love with the new costs. We, we were talking pre-recording. One of the hardest things to do when you're really high on a guy is n- no one to get out because you kind of want to ride it as your personal darling. Tell everyone, well, I was in on this guy first. But just because you loved him last year doesn't mean you love him this year. Even though I'm rooting for the player, I think he's a fine player. It's all about cost, and the new cost for Isaiah Pacheco is too heavy for me. How do you feel about Pacheco, Nate? Yeah, I'm pretty much exactly in line with what you're saying. Um, very similar to you. I had a lot of Pacheco. Um, uh, wherever I've been able to get out at a decent cost, basically once a lot of these running backs, and we'll talk about this, I'm sure, when we get into uh, the 2023 running back class, is the reason that you prioritize these running backs late in these rookie drafts is because as soon as they get a little hit like this, then they're instantly worth a second to somebody in your league. And you can turn around that ROI so fast. And Pacheco is just the latest example of that to me. Uh, Not a guy who I really think has potential to take over a more significant role at any point. I think they'll always have another back to kind of handle um, pass pro and to handle most of the passing down work as well. Um, definitely an exciting player. And that's part of it too with Pacheco, right? Is that he looks exciting on the field. He looks like he's going a hundred miles an hour, even when he's not. So it's, uh, one of these guys where the eye test really pops for a lot of people and they think, oh man, I got to have that guy on my team. And so he is one of these guys who probably has a bit of an inflated value in market. 
And I'm just willing to take that kind of ROI that you're talking about every single day of the week with a guy like this. And another guy who I was hoping would have some of that ROI for us and might be able to flip, James Cook, also going to be 24 uh, going into next year, another one of these senior backs from the last draft class. And this past year, he was the RB44 Obviously, a day two pick for the Buffalo Bills got a lot of people pretty excited. I did see him go even in the first round in some rookie drafts, uh, which was always a bit rich for my money. Definitely not a guy with a bell cow profile at five foot eleven, hundred ninety pounds. Uh, it's kind of a weird situation with Cook now. You have uncertainty in the coordinators that are going to be there for him in Buffalo and what they're going to think of Cook and his skill set and how he's going to be used moving forward. Um, they, the bills could decide that they really need to take some load off Josh Allen in terms of the rushing game. And they could go out and prioritize a back, like, um, someone who's actually a bell cow and can stay on the field all the time. And that could diminish, uh, cook's potential workload moving forward. They could decide that, uh, they're just going to kind of accept that they wasted a pick with, with cook a little bit in the second round. That's possible. Um, it seems like the Bills really tried to fill a pass-catching back role, and then they didn't really use Cook in that way. If you look at his last two games there in the playoffs, um, against Miami, he has zero targets, and against Cincinnati, he has zero targets. And it just seems like when the chips were down, they weren't even using him in the role that he was ostensibly drafted to fill. So it's really confusing what the team is really thinking about James Cook at this point. Uh, it's a player that I really wasn't into um, at cost at any point throughout this process. And I was hoping, you know, for the people who did have him, that we would have a situation here where maybe he comes on a little bit to the back end of the season and he's, yeah, has a few blow up games, maybe a two touchdown game or something like that. And you can at least get your return on investment back and kind of re roll into a new class that may be a little deeper and guys who could actually have a bigger role moving forward. But uh, I really don't know if I see a bigger role moving forward for Cook. You have the, those two games that are like, and even before that, his most targets in the four games prior to that was three. So it's not like he was, you know, taking over a pass catching role and then they decided to move away and go with a veteran back for the playoffs or something weird like that. Like, that's not the case either. It was just that he was consistently not targeted through the last six games that the Bills played. And so. It's really, uh, it's really up in the air what the Bills think of James Cook. I, I don't know if the Bills really know what they think of James Cook going into next year. I think they're probably going to have a pretty open mind about what they do at the position in the offseason. You have Devin Singletary, who's a free agent now. I think they, and for my money anyway, we'll get your opinion. Skyler, you're obviously more tuned into the team. But in my opinion, uh, if I was running that team, I'd let Singletary go and I'd be looking for someone who's a little bit more of a complete back and try to get someone in uh, who could fulfill a more, I guess, uh, every down role consistently for them in all facets of the game. That would be my take on the situation, um, but definitely we got to go to the FF Buffalo himself and find out <laughs> what exactly is going on with this backfield. What do you think, Skyler? Uh, I had always I had always thought that they were going to bring Devin Singletary back, kind of re-roll with what they had been doing, but with how displeased everyone around the organization seems to be with the way they fizzled out in the playoffs, there could be a lot of things shaken up potentially going into the next season. Um, I saw something that was first-year play callers hadn't, made a super bowl in like 30 years so bring you know ken dorsey i know they like for the culture to uh, elevate guys in-house but bringing a guy in in potentially your only super bowl window you have seen for a while and could see for a while as a first year play car bringing him in was a questionable decision i think a lot of people were reflecting he could be on his way out he was interviewing for jobs before that game we'll see if those stick maybe he stays with the team they don't try to completely burn it down but early talks there that you know, he lost a lot of people around the organization, both coordinators for this team. Um, I would expect McDermott and Bean to stay running at the top, but potentially they bring guys to shake it up. And that could affect a lot of things with all sorts of aspects of Buffalo football. Uh, Devin Zinkle there could absolutely be on his way out. I think he's a pretty limited first, second down back. Um, 
I don't know what that means for James Cook. I would expect them to, as Nate said, bring in somebody who can handle more of a full load. Uh, even And even if it is Singletary who just stays in and they keep things as is, where have those targets been for James Cook? They're using him as a change of pace back, not even as a patch catching back. And the, the upside for me is really limited with James Cook. At running back 34, we are well below consensus on James Cook, but that's kind of been the theme for his entire career for us. JWB, we had him as a mid-second round pick in last year's draft class when a lot of people had him shoved up to the late first. Um, and him being a mid second for us was strictly because of how weak the depth in the draft class was. We were telling anyone mm-hmm. who took him to try to ship him for a 24 first with the excitement around him. Nate did that in a couple spots and I bet he's pretty darn pleased with himself right now. The BMI, uh, it's like a 27, 28, the hit rate of guys at that BMI to come in and end up being workload backs are far and few in between. I think we're talking only a handful of guys, maybe like Jamal Charles, Christian McCaffrey. The list doesn't go much past those two names. James Cook certainly isn't those players. They had much more complete profiles than a James Cook. Uh, I do agree. Buffalo will see this probably as a wasted pick, especially with deficiencies all around the field. They have a lot of question marks with the team. Um, probably their six best playmakers on defense. You've got three or four of them coming off significant injuries, uh, two of them up for contracts and, then Milano left over uh, a lot of the defensive line pressures they've gotten have a lot of the guys they brought into pressure haven't been there. They couldn't get to Joe Burrow without a line. Um, and on offense, I think they very clearly need a, a an actual second weapon than Gabe Davis. I think Gabe Davis is fine, but as probably a wide receiver four for your team, a guy can rotate in as the second outside wide receiver time to time. He just, he was just too inconsistent this year. His hands were kind of all over the place. I like him. He's good at a bunch of things, not great at anything. And when you're leaning on him, McKenzie, you know, Shakir Crowder, Dawson Knox as the second options behind Stefan Diggs, you'll find games where when the team's, focus on digs exclusively you're left with nothing except josh trying to run the ball and that's what they did in this Mm -hmm. game when they need to get a run game going it was josh running three four times in a row and when he's going to be your team's lead rusher what is left for james cook who's not even catching passes um i'm completely out on this player and james cook i'm still seeing him go around eight nine people saw a couple exciting runs at the end of the year because he is fast i mean those runs are always going to happen with a guy with his speed i'm taking that and trying to move on i'm re-rolling the dice you can get in Late first, early second, probably tough to get a first just because you see that number one, people are going to be a little more hesitant. But if you can get into the early first, even the mid first, I'm cool re-rolling the running back here. I don't think James Cook is going to be a player to build around. So I am out on James Cook just like Nate. Um, too many red flags, too many red flags. A lot of question marks with the team, just not interested. 